Well, now you know. we're just getting too crazy because now we're talking about <laughs> mint mashed potatoes, Mom. I can't go there. <laughs> Welcome to another holiday edition of Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, a show for people who embrace the warm and cozy spirit of everyday living in the Midwest. From the blog Random Sweets, I'm your host, Stacey Mergenthal. Since I can remember, my mom, Linda Moe, has shared dozens and dozens of delicious goodies at our family's Christmas gatherings. So today we're talking about most of them, like vintage treats from her mom. There's mashed potato candy, cherry bing bars, and a fruit salad with a cooked pineapple dressing. And then we toss in a few of the newer recipes that she's added over the years, like Ritz cracker cookies, corn pops clusters, puppy chow, our family's version of a taco dip, we get healthy with veggie pizza, we make caramel corn chips, Chex Mix, and orange chewins cookies with orange sliced candies in them. Of course, we love our bars in the Midwest, so we're talking about the ones with our take on candy bars like Mounds and Babe Ruth, and then 9 by 13 pans that start with a box of cereal like s'mores, caramel rice krispies, and peanut butter krispies treats, and our Christmas classics like Seven Layer and Mud Hand Bars. We each share a funny memory from Christmas's past, like what happened to my mom's forgotten kisses, and why my sisters and I brought large totes with us to Christmas at my mom's one year, and we headed straight to her spare bedroom. You can get all the recipes that we talk about today on randomsweets.com. And if you're new to Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, welcome. I'm just so excited that you pressed play today and that you're here. And if you've been here before, I'm just so glad that you came back. If you love what you hear, please subscribe, rate this podcast, and take a second to write a quick review so that we can keep these great episodes coming. Welcome back to Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, Mom. Hello. Episode two with you. (laughs) My second podcast. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) Woohoo. Becoming a real pro. Mm -hmm. Uh The uh, first episode that you did was in February because we talked about the birthday cake and the vintage snow frosting that you yes. make. And so that was season one, episode 12, back in February of this year. So today I asked you to talk about your Christmas baking because my sisters and I have such good memories of all the baking that you did when we were growing up. That baking was was just something that I, I think we probably just thought was normal that everybody does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now I'm learning that that's not necessarily a tradition in every family. And as a baker, now myself and older, I know how much work goes into that. So when you're planning a family get together, there's all the cleaning and the prepping and the setting the tables and making the meals. But then somehow you manage to fit in baking that we all remember. So I just wanted to talk about some of the recipes and you've already mentioned as we've just been getting ready for this, mentioned a few different things that you baked that I had forgotten about um, or that I'm not quite even sure what is. So I'm excited to hear some of those today. And then you yourself, as you were thinking about it, you said you had remembered like the Ritz cracker cookies and some things that we did that you hadn't remembered either. So we're kind of going down Christmas memory lane here in the yes. in the kitchen. And I just cannot wait. And I will say it's bringing back good memories for me, too. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but oh, I don't know yeah. how I did it either. But um, <laughs> it, it's. You can almost smell some of the things. The the first thing that I was asking as I was thinking about it, like I don't remember Christmas without you baking a lot of goodies. Now, how much that means or what those things were, I couldn't tell you. I just feel like I always remember in our family in general too. So when we would go to grandma's, your mom, grandma Janet's, she would, she would have goodies there too. So I think we're just a family of bakers. We love our sweets. We're Norwegian, German. Yes. <laughs> um, we love our sweets here in the Midwest. And But the first thing I was thinking is, when did you start doing all that baking? Do you remember kind of how that? Um, not really, but I know my mom worked at the hospital in the laundry. And she worked always five days a week. She had Wednesday and, and Sunday off. So Saturday was not weekend for her you know for prepping and 
we got married in 1969 and we started the cakes at Christmas time for your dad for birthday. So that got me into more baking. He had a favorite cake, so mm-hmm. we had chocolate cakes. And then mom, as she aged and she had rheumatoid arthritis really bad. And it, baking got more difficult mm-hmm. for her. And I had more time and energy mm-hmm. <laughs> back then in my 20s. And so I started doing some of the things, and it was just, I I always liked to bake. So I guess it just kind of gradually, it wasn't that, um, can you do this this year? I can't. It was just, well, why don't I make the fudge kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So it was more gradual, and just, and it wasn't that I was assigned to, I just, I loved doing it, and it relieved a lot of pressure for mom because yeah. the first years we did have our holiday meal at mom and dad's and they had a very small house mm-hmm. too so <laughs> yep um, and grandma still managed to I mean I still remember her making her kumkaka and lefsa and those are things you could make far in advance yeah so that and was she nice. made the heritage things right not just sweets yeah and then the date cookies yes um and because I don't like them, so I didn't want to bake right. them. <laughs> and Heidi loved those yeah. and the her white sugar cookies. I don't even yeah. like to call them sugar cookies because it's so different to me than a sugar cookie. But her grandma's white cookies is all I call them, I guess. But yeah. she would still bring those. And that was because of my dad. That was mm-hmm. his mother's recipe. And that was my dad's favorite cookie. And yeah. they were a lot more work. She did the more intense mm-hmm. work. Yeah, recipes. those and I did the where you made a nine by thirteen pan all at one time. Yeah, those white cookies they do take some time. I'm the yes. the maker of those now at Christmas yes. time, and I always think, Stacy, make sure you leave yourself enough time. Yep, <laughs> to make Grandma's white cookies because if you can't show up with anything but those, like that's the one thing I know that I have to bring to yeah. Christmas. So yeah, well, do you remember where you got? your recipes so you have all kinds of things and they didn't come from grandma because they weren't necessarily ones you know maybe a few of them might have come from yeah, grandma some but, were from mom but some, but some were ones that I know mom and I just discussed or you try this one and I'll try that one and I don't know how mm-hmm. how the, some of them came about or you might be at somebody else's house and they're mm-hmm. serving, so you get the recipe from them because yeah. it's tried and true. You've already tried them without all the ingredients and work. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they just filter in. It's like any other normal, normal dessert or anything. <laughs> you go to someone's house and it's so good. And yeah. would you share the recipe? Yeah. So, so at your peak of baking for Christmas, can do you know how many, I don't know why I have this number stuck in my head, like 22, but how many sweets, different kinds of things did you make? That, that would be pretty close. It would be up to a couple uh-huh. dozen different things. Different kinds of things. And usually it was the same thing each year. And you usually didn't drop anything. You might increase it because you found something else in the year's time that was good. Mm. So okay, well, instead of 22, I'll make 23 this year (laughs) kind of thing. (laughs) And then you get to the point where this is ridiculous, all this. So then you kind of start weeding out which doesn't go as well or which did I have so many left and which Mm -hmm. is most most popular. And those years started much later on. (laughs) But yeah, you would just kind of start weeding them out. You go from 22 to 21 to 20. Uh. Well, and you kept a list, but unfortunately in moving and different things now, and because of our family getting bigger and now Callie and Heidi and I host Christmas and we do baking as well. So everybody bakes a little bit less than what we have. Well, you would hope. <laughs> well, we do though, because my baking list gets smaller yeah, every mine year. Sure has. I start out thinking I'm going to make a lot, but then I end up only making say four things. And I thought I was oh. going to bring 10, right? But Anyway, you had this, like you said, a stenographer's notebook (laughs) with with the notes from the years, what you made and what didn't go so well, or maybe what to back off of the next year and make more of because it ran out. 
I even had what I served each year and like how many pounds of potatoes I had peeled for the meal that year. Did Mm -hmm. I have leftovers? Was it too much? Do I need to make more? Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think I have destroyed that thinking I'll never need that again. Or, you know, you'll probably find it in a couple weeks. You'll be like, oh, (laughs) there's that list I was looking for. (laughs) Yeah, it's possible, but not probable. (laughs) I think it's gone. But that's a good thing, though, for people. If somebody's younger and listening to this, I do the same thing. I have journal books that I keep notes about different things I've baked or we maybe cooked something. Jason worked for a while on perfecting a recipe for um, like a spicy red rice and beans. And I just kind of make notes in there. And and then we have that to look back on. Well, we just had Thanksgiving for Jason's family. And I sat down with that book and then wrote in there how we made the turkey because we made it ahead. We brined it. We smoked it. How big it was, how long it took. I made notes because we didn't take it out of the refrigerator on Thanksgiving morning soon enough. And so we were an hour delayed in our meal because it took longer to heat up. Um, We made, I think we figured out about 15 pounds of potatoes and there were 15 or 16 guests. So we made, we had a lot of leftover potatoes and then I didn't have a plan really for all those leftover potatoes when there wasn't sort of a, a matching amount of turkey and dressing and things like that. So to make those notes, because I know I host Christmas next year for our family. If we do the turkey like that, then I'll have the notes about what worked or what to do different. I even put in like what crock pots we used for which things, and it just makes things go so smooth. So I think it's smart to make notes after you host and what you've made and all those things that you'll you'll forget. You think you'll remember, but you'll forget by next (laughs) year. (laughs) definitely. Could you think of any recipes, anything that you made that you thought, I'm going to try this, and then it didn't go over so well at Christmas? Well, after the first few years, and the list got to be in the 20s of what I was doing (laughs) each year, if I couldn't get rid of anything, I didn't add. Mm. It was just the tried and true. Sure. And it's like, now I ask Mm -hmm. you three before I make anything, what do you want me to bring this year? Because it was getting so, three or four of us would make Chex Mix. Yep. Each one made them just a little different. One likes the little fish crackers in mm-hmm. it, and one doesn't. And one likes nuts, walnuts, and one doesn't, and such. So instead of everybody bringing the same thing, it's a lot nicer to just bring a few things. Mm -hmm. And some things, as I was saying earlier, so you just kind of pick and choose what is the favorite. And I I have enjoyed, with you three girls making your items, too, I'm enjoying trying new things. Mm -hmm. Because you're not making the same thing that I always made. It's not Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to quit making these four things. One of you make those four things. Mm -hmm. You might bring four things, but they might be all new. Right. And that's kind of exciting every year, too. It's, I think we need little placards by everything, though, so we don't have to keep yelling, who made these? What, what is what it? What is it? <laughs> right. No, that's good. And, and my big question would be, and does it contain raisins? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think most people know better not to put raisins in things at Christmas. <laughs> you won't find raisins in anything no. that I make. No. Because well, I don't care for them either. I had not way too goods. many when I was a child. <laughs> Well, well, let's back up to, well, first of all, so we're going to talk about some of the recipes specifically of that you made. But right now, the way we do it is, Mom, you'll text my sisters and me, Heidi and Callie, and say, I'm going to start doing my baking list. What do you want me to bring? And so we'll each text you one or two things that we really just love that you've made. I know me, I'll always ask for the forgotten kisses. I think Callie does too, but I don't know. Yes. I'm going to ask you. Yes. And then... Um, I used to like the cherry bing bars as well, but then I know for sure that I like and my kids really like the Rice Krispie bars that have the peanut butter in them and the chocolate on top. So, mm-hmm. um, what what do you, what does Callie ask for? She also likes the forgotten kisses, and Heidi likes the cherry chewins is what the recipe is called or not cherry orange orange okay it has 
uh, cut up orange slices mm -hmm. in a kind of a brown sugar dough and orange slices. Yep. Um, that's the main, main thing. And I know Heidi likes the date cookies. I have made them, but not necessarily at Christmas, mm. that it might be something that I just make some other time in the year and take to her. And for you, you do so much of your own baking that it's hard to pinpoint one thing and surprise you with it. So <laughs> that's why in February I did the birthday yeah. cake. That, that I knew I was awesome. going to get to surprise you with that one. Yeah, no, that was really cool. So uh, you have your recipes in front of you and, and you have kind of kept your, I think you said that in your big box there that you have a ton of recipes, you rubber band the stack <laughs> and there's 20 some recipes in oh, there, I oh swear. Yeah. yeah. And so she has this stack of recipe cards and she rubber bands them, sticks them in her box. So when it's time to get out, do Christmas, she has them all in one spot. So tell us what, what's in that stack. Well, um, they're used to, this is one thing that I have not made for a while. There always had to be brownies and then the fudge frosting on it. And I do not make brownies anymore. It's so plain compared <laughs> to what the <laughs> holiday baking is. So mm -hmm. I don't do that. And seven layer bars, always made those. I haven't made those for quite a while now. On the Borden Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk, this old recipe of magic cookie bars. <laughs> I don't make those. Wait, are those the same as seven layer bars? The magic cookie pretty bars? Pretty much. Pretty much the same thing. Oh, okay. A couple different things in it. I know you don't care for coconut, and there's coconut in those. So. I, I will in those. What I do is I put it right on the top and make sure that it gets a little bit um, crispy. Oh, so toasted. if it's toasted, then I'm fine with it. Oh, mm -hmm. So okay. I really like seven layer bars because I love sweetened condensed milk and butterscotch. Oh, well, it's like candy. I mean, <laughs> all the different things you put in, it's mm -hmm. basically all sugar. <laughs> Everything. Exactly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, Chex Mix, I used to make like mm. three or four batches of that. Uh, Mounds Bars, it's like... Um, Mounds Candy Bar. It's a graham cracker crust and um, sweetened condensed milk and coconut. There again, not your favorite. And that I have cut in half, but there again, you might end up throwing half that can away. Mm. Um, puppy chow, that was oh, always yeah. a big thing. I still make that about every other year. And I know my kids really like puppy chow, too. Mm -hmm. But I'm not the only one that would bring it. So if oh. that's not on the list of what your replies are to bring, I don't bring it because I figure, well, someone else is mm. <laughs> making it. We all have so many of the same recipes. So <laughs> True. Uh, mud head and bars. I haven't made those in a very long time. But those always had to be. But I want to know, that's one of them that you mentioned that I was like, wait a minute, I don't know what those are. And I don't have mud head bars in my recipe box from you. Oh, really? So what, what is that? Um, it's shortening, sugar, egg, flour, baking powder, salt, nuts, semi-sweet chocolate chips, mini marshmallows, and brown sugar. Mmm. And it ends up kind of a, a light crust that cracks on the top. Is it almost meringue cracked on yes. the top? Oh, yes. see, I think I probably like those, and I bet I do need that recipe. Yeah. Okay. Um, taco dip, of course. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There will dip. not be a holiday in the family, I don't think, that taco dip does not come to. <laughs> that is a long tradition. And that was a recipe I got at 3M. Oh, okay. At, we had uh, potluck for holiday and one of the other gals in our shift brought this taco dip and it, I know others make it with um, queso mm -hmm. sauce and stuff. I don't like spices and peppers and all that so mine is very plain. It's just hamburger, Velveeta cheese, cream cheese and Hormel chili without beans. Yeah. So, but that's the way I prefer it. But I know you girls, when you make it, sometimes it's got the... 
I don't jellies and stuff. I in. don't do it differently, but Callie does do it. Callie she uses does. queso and stuff and yep. likes her spicy. She might use some sausage in there too. So she yep. hers is a little bit different, but um yeah, we, we make sure we have that taco dip and sometimes I know my sisters and I were just talking about how we've been doubling or tripling the batch and it's too much. We end up, whoever makes it goes home with too much of it now. So we'll probably bring it in just a smaller batch, but well, that one's really good. Well, you can continue to bring in the big batch and I'll start bringing a tote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's funny to Another us. Story. Why? <laughs> yeah. You need to tell that story. We need to interrupt this recipe list for mom's you story. You want to do that No, now? you. Yeah, but you oh. tell the story because I forgot about it. Oh, well, of course, when I when I still got to host the holidays and host Christmas, it would be very crowded because we'd have close to 20 people and I didn't have a large house. But I would store all my goodies. It was just always called the goodie stash mm-hmm. back in the stairway to go to my attic because I... I wanted to keep things cool Mm -hmm. and I didn't have an attached garage so everything just stayed cold into the stairway for the attic so all my cake pans they'd be (laughs) stacked on the (laughs) steps going upstairs well the one Christmas the girls had kidded me that they were going to bring their totes for the leftovers and I'm thinking more the meat and potatoes kind of leftovers (laughs) In walks all three girls with these big totes. And I mean, they were good sized totes. They weren't like shoebox sized totes. They weren't Rubbermaid contained, like yep. little kitchen things. They were yep. big totes, like yes. moving totes. <laughs> yes. And they walked straight in the back door into the kitchen, through the dining room, and back into the bedroom. And I heard the door close. <laughs> and I thought, what the heck? So I figured, well, okay, they're prepared for after we eat. And they took forever to come back out. (laughs) When they came out, they had already gone through all the goodies that were in the stairway and picked out what they wanted. So what we got for goodies for the afternoon (laughs) was the leftovers of what they didn't take. (laughs) <laughs> well, I can guarantee you we didn't, like, clear any one specific thing out. No, but. nothing was cleared, but uh, <laughs> it sure made serving a whole lot quicker. <laughs> you so needed. it wasn't as much to put on a platter. We were helping you out with platter space. <laughs> yes. And that is one other thing that I, I learned through the years, is when you are done baking, put them, cut them up, make your assorted platter don't Mm -hmm. just leave them in the pans I made that mistake for a few years where when it came time for the goodies to come out then you sit there and open up all the pans and you got to take out piece by piece Mm -hmm. and it took forever and (laughs) it was like a light bulb came on and I thought now why am I not doing this before everybody arrives yeah and then just cover the platter and it, it really cut down on the prep time. Yeah. Plus it probably helped even with you cutting them and then taking them out. I know you would put them in like Tupperware containers to mm-hmm. store them like on your steps or somewhere nice and cool because you needed some of those pans to bake another batch of something else. Oh, yes. It's not like you had 25 cake pans and you baked a lot of bars. I so. had a lot of cake oh. pans. <laughs> well, I don't remember washing 25 cake pans at a time, but... That's how I feel now at Christmas, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I often had if I needed eight by thirteen, nine by thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be quick. Get it cooled, set it outside <laughs> or in the garage yeah. or something to cool it so that you can get it out of the pan and right. reuse the pan again. Yep. You always had hot water in the sink, always, because mm-hmm. you always yeah. had to wash something, measuring cups or whatever. Yeah, I learned I got multiples of more things. <laughs> and you and I are the same. We, uh, we're we always washing dishes while we're baking, like constant. There's water in the sink. And yep. by Christmas Day or whenever we're hosting, our hands are just about raw. Yeah, I don't from... have, I've never had a dishwasher, so. And, and I don't. And that's fine with me because I prefer just to wash them by my hands. Yeah. So. And my baking stuff, mostly I don't put in the dishwasher. And, oh. and. 
I can't. When you're baking and baking and baking and baking, you need these pans again. You need these spatulas again. You need Quicker the mixing bowl again, right? Load. I'm not going to run the dishwasher. Right. That might happen at midnight when I finally go to bed and I'm just like, just toss it all in and go to bed, yeah. whether, you know, but... But back to the totes, I mean, that was a joke that we played on you, which was funny and I had forgotten, but it's because you're so generous that you would always let us, either you gave us containers or would say, you know, make sure part of your joy, I think the joy that you had of baking all of that was you really enjoyed saying to us before we would leave. And especially when our kids were little and we weren't, I I know I wasn't doing much baking But you would let us bring a lot of that home and then we would enjoy it over the next few weeks and the kids, your grandkids got to enjoy it. So that was really fun. Very true. Yeah. Because, I mean, I was single. So what was I going to do with it all? Mm -hmm. I know these days when I have extra things, I put little containers in the mailbox for the mailman. (laughs) (laughs) I've never heard any bad review from him, but... And uh, you're still getting your mail, so... Yes, yes, I still get the mail. And a couple neighbors that don't do a lot of baking, I'll mm-hmm. take things up there because you make a 9 by 13 pan, and I always make something, of course, that I like, mm-hmm. and I would sit there and eat the whole thing, so I've got to get it out of here. But I, I enjoy baking, right. not cooking so much, but... <laughs> I do enjoy baking, and I have nothing to bake for anymore. Mm -hmm. That is one thing I do miss. I mean, it was was fun and a lot of work, but I actually miss making a lot of that. Right, right. Because now I can do it all within just an afternoon. Mm -hmm. I might make four things. Well, it's all done right away where... It used to take days and 24 hours wasn't quite enough in the day. Yeah. Well, let's go back. I think we stopped at Taco Dip. Let's go back to the pile before we forget that pile of recipes. I'm not sure where this came from. I think it came from you, the caramel corn chips. I think you started that. Yeah, because I was at someone's house once that made them. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to try those because I don't like sweet and salty. Well, I tried them, and that's that's what got me started on liking sweet and salty like that. So mm-hmm. I got a recipe for that recipe from a friend, yeah. the caramel corn I chips. I think all of us make that for not necessarily just our family, but to take to other events because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it is delicious. It's addicting. Yeah, that's why we Truly have to share addicting. it. <laughs> yes. Um, orange Chewins, that was Heidi's favorite that has the cut up orange slices that has a coconut too a lot of these things have coconut so Mm -hmm. i don't know how you've gotten all these recipes from me (laughs) because they have coconut well i don't yeah i don't make the orange chewings remember that one year i was going to make them for heidi and then at christmas you guys are like where's the orange chewings and i said well i didn't make them because there's something weird in there and you're like there's nothing weird in there and i said yeah there's something in there that i didn't know what it was i didn't have it so i couldn't make the orange chewings you're like, there's nothing weird in there. So I took out the recipe and I said, yeah, nut meats. I don't know what nut meats are. I don't have that. And you're like, they're just nuts, Stacy. <laughs> Chopped up nuts. <laughs> but I wasn't used to recipes. Now I can see in older vintage or community Old recipes. Yes, yes, they were called nut meats. And now we just call them nuts. <laughs> yep. It's like shortening used to be called lard. Oh, One sure. of these recipes still had in parentheses lard mm-hmm. because that. That's how old these are. Um, Chocolate clusters, which is the sugar pops. and Yeah. The corn pop cereal with chocolate. And is there peanut butter melted in the chocolate? Yes. And then you're stirring in corn pops and make a dry roasted. Chocolate chips, butterscotch chips, peanut butter, and cereal and peanuts. Yeah, I loved those. And I have that recipe on my blog. They're addicting also. Yeah. I love anything with butterscotch and peanut butter and oh my goodness. Yep. Yep. And Forgotten Kisses, which is just a meringue with... Last year, I don't think it went over so well. I used um, little peppermint chips mm. in it. And I've used... Um, or did you do this with the little mini cherry chips too? But I keep yes. going back to just wanting those yep, chocolate chips. I tried chips. cherry chips, I think, the year before. And then last yeah. year, I tried the little peppermint, crushed up peppermint in yep. it. And I think it's just to go back to the little mini chocolate chips and chopped up nuts. 
And in those, I do like chop twice, put them through the food mm. chopper twice. Yeah, they're very fine, which I like. Yes. Because the meringue of that Forgotten Kiss is so light. You don't want a heavy nut in there. Right. And you don't want a big chunk mm-hmm. of nut. I put the mini, the Andy's Mint Pieces in there once too. And again, they're oh. fine, but I just go back to the classic mm-hmm. with the chocolate chips. Now, um, that is the one thing that I'll ask for you to bring because I love those. And I've made them before, but I love yours. But do you want to tell the story? <laughs> Uh, do I get to tell this one? You can tell. <laughs> you can tattle on me. You you tell me if I tell the story right. All I, I just remember, <laughs> you know, we requested that you bring the Forgotten Kisses. I don't even remember where Christmas was at. But it's time for the treat time and all the treats are out on the tables. And I'm trying to figure out where are my Forgotten Kisses from my mother and they're not there. <laughs> and, and you said, oh, where are those? Where did I put those? And then you're like, oh, I did forget them in the oven. (laughs) That's because they they were forgotten. They go into the oven overnight. Mm -hmm. You heat the oven, I think it's to 250 or something like that. And put them in and then turn the oven off. And then you leave them in overnight, Mm -hmm. which in my mind, you literally leave them in overnight. (laughs) Now you could make them first thing in the morning and take them out in the evening. Same amount of time, but no, overnight. (laughs) And of course I like to make those last minute so that they're really dried out. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise they kind of take moisture out of the air again. Yeah, well, I made them the night before our gathering, and in the morning I got everything else. That's another lesson I learned. Anything that I need to take, write it down, make a list. Mm. of Even if it's to bring a serving spoon, sure. write it down. Or the whipped cream for pumpkin pie. Yes. Because who can eat pumpkin pie without whipped cream? Exactly. <laughs> so as you're getting ready to leave the next day, check each thing off as you walk it to the car (laughs) so that you know it's gotten along we joke about that every year about whether they actually got forgotten in the The oven or if forgotten kisses got forgotten right but those are really good (laughs) um pineapple dressing we always had that same salad and that was a recipe from my mom I don't know. A lot of her recipes came from her working at the laundry at the hospital. Oh, okay. Because the laundry was right next door to the kitchen, and all the ladies would have break together. And, of course, what are you going to talk about but recipes, Mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of things came from from her coworkers at the hospital. I don't know if that was one of them or not, but I remember it from... Being at my aunts and uncles. So, I mean, she made it for many, many years. And it's a fruit salad, right? Yes. That has like this pineapple it's dressing. It's a cooked, cooked dressing. You drain the pineapple juice and you use it and flour and oh. eggs, put eggs in it, and you boil it until it's thick. And that's the hard part, having the patience to get it cooked down, reduced down. Okay. And that too, where it to drain the pineapple, it just says pineapple. It doesn't, and can sizes have changed mm. through the years. So, mm. and it makes a difference if you use ring pineapple, you have more juice than you maybe have if you use a can of tidbit oh, okay. pineapple. And I usually do the ring. And so I end up having to. It's basically like doubling the recipe. Evidently, there wasn't much juice in the pineapple years ago oh. <laughs> when this was created, or a smaller can of pineapple. Mm-hmm. I use the regular, I don't know what they are, 20 ounce or whatever now. So, Does that have marshmallows in it? You can put. Now, for me, I wrote pineapple, bananas, fruit cocktails, strawberries, marshmallows, coconut, chopped nuts, grapes, pears, peaches, oranges, apples for options so if it's something I had on hand or if I use Mm -hmm. canned or if I sit and go through all the recipes and make you know what I am going to make and what ingredients I need Mm. for each thing um about the only other thing is veggie pizza I kind of started going to make healthy treats (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and I crave veggie pizza every now and then. Yeah. So, um, how do you? What do you make yours? Do you do crescent rolls? Yes. And then, what's the? Is it a cream cheese ranch spread? Yes, crescent rolls and then cream cheese, mayo or salad dressing. I don't care for mayo, so I use the salad dressing. Mm-hmm. And then the ranch dressing mix. And there, too, I wrote down carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, celery, green and black olives, radishes, onions, peppers, uh, cucumbers, grated cheese, an assortment of all different things. So if it's something I have on hand or I may not have thought of it, like radishes, I'm not fond of it. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to take it somewhere, it's a little more color. Yeah, it's I pretty. might not put so many on, but a little color. Mm-hmm. So. And the only other thing that I have in my pile is the chocolate cake and the snow frosting, hmm. which is not my Christmas baking, but it's in my pile that I use over and over. Plus, because of Dad's birthday being on the 23rd well, of December, you were doing all of this, plus yes. doing the big Christmas, I yeah. mean, Dad's birthday party, which there's a podcast episode out there with my dad, his ice cream, but all the work that my mom was doing yeah. for Christmas and Christmas baking, then there was also this birthday party on top of it so it got to be those last years as families grew I was baking four cakes and I always Mm -hmm. made from scratch I Mm -hmm. I didn't use cake mixes so Mm -hmm. it was four chocolate cakes all the same thing I didn't at least I had enough sense to not do well do a yellow one and a white one and Mm -hmm. a chocolate one it was everybody got the same thing it was but we needed four chocolate cakes Mm -hmm. to supply all the people (laughs) <laughs> and yeah that was on the 23rd so it was getting the house cleaned getting the cakes baked all the ingredients for the ice cream go out and buy the cream from a farmer south of town and mm-hmm. then after everybody left clean up again because <laughs> the next day was christmas eve and i'd have my parents over mm-hmm. since it was just my brother and i for family so then it was get everything cleaned up again from all the traffic we had. I believe it was 68 people in our house the one year for the birthday. Mm. And we just kind of shuffled. If you were in the living room, you moved to the family room. If you were in the family room, that bunch moved to the dining room and worked on a puzzle. And if you were in the dining room, you had to move on to the living room. <laughs> but to get it cleaned up and make chili for the next day and then after they would leave on Christmas Eve then it was unwrapping a couple gifts everybody got to unwrap and then clean up again and (laughs) get up early the next day and stuff a turkey and that was our Christmas Eve meal then was chili I was trying to think of what we had but it was usually chili Well, I went through my recipe box and thought well I'm going to see what's in here that I remember mom making at Christmas and Surprisingly, I think I have a few in front of me that you didn't mention. So well, I was going to say we also I also did the Ritz crackers with the peanut mm. butter in between and then dip them in chocolate. Mhm. Um, and I do those I now. Done I that love for them. For a long time. That yeah. I don't know why, but I did a lot of labor intensive ones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to sit there and spread peanut butter mm. and then dip them all, you handled them more and more. Yeah. I do those now, and I feel like that was one thing that I helped with at Christmas, baking. I don't remember doing any of the others, but that was one thing that I remember helping with, the Ritz cracker and peanut butter. Well, that was so easy, even being little kids. Yeah. You can put peanut butter between two crackers, and Mm -hmm. it was just going to get covered with chocolate anyhow, so. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, I always dip pretzels. Well, my recipe pile here, so it had the Mounds bars, Babe Ruth bars, Oh, I don't think yes. you had those in your stack. And I love the Babe Ruth bars. It tastes like a Babe Ruth candy yes. bar. Even better, I think. I'm going to have to find that recipe. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. And the one that I have here actually is handwritten that you wrote. I didn't write this one. But that one has your butter, brown sugar. And then again, there's peanut butter. But then um, oatmeal, corn syrup, and vanilla. Oh, there's. did I say salted peanuts? You oh. said peanuts, I think. Oatmeal syrup, vanilla, I, peanut butter. Too, they're it, salted peanuts, yeah. The cherry bing bars I didn't have in my stack here either. Right. But that's one that I quit making also because it makes so much and so little goes 
yeah. because of the quantity of <laughs> right goodies that we have at Christmas. Yeah. And that one was always a favorite of mine. And I was looking for that this morning and I couldn't find it, but I the know I have Bing? it. The cherry Bing bars. That was from mom. I don't okay. know where she got the recipe, but I got my recipe from her. So I did try to make it. It's been quite a few years now, so I feel like I have more baking skill under my belt from the first time I tried to make it, but Weren't I totally runny? messed it up. I don't know. I don't even I remember. Think you said they were runny. They and, wouldn't set up, so I yeah. think the cherry part on the bottom didn't set up, and I don't know what I did, but I I would always like that you made it, but you're right. It makes a lot, and I wouldn't eat enough or take enough yeah. home with me to make it worth making those so that's just, just that's as sweet as fudge so i mean mm -hmm. even an inch square exactly is yeah. plenty big you could get three bites out of a inch square of that yeah it's very much so like it goes fudge. a long long way mm -hmm. that would be something to take more to uh an exchange mm -hmm. so that you knew some everyone was going to take from that yeah then I had the magic cookie bars. So that was like the seven layer bars yeah. and the crispy bars. So those are the sugar, white corn syrup, peanut butter, oh, rice yeah. krispies. That's just the, that's an always normal one. That doesn't right. even have to be in this pile. But I not everybody has often. a recipe for this. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I've made them because I just like that you bring them at Christmas. Oh. So now I'm thinking I need to make these because Sarah Peterson that I... Uh, met she has the blog vintage dish and tell and her mom makes something very similar there's maybe one or two different ingredients swapped out like this but not everybody has that you know they're doing special k bars or scotch roos this is say, along the lines but it's not it's the same thing roos, but it's not no no this is different and mm -hmm. i know my kids really like that one and then the caramel rice crispy bars remember your caramel rice crispy bars mm -hmm. and so i made those one time and what did I not know or think? And so I feel like I doubled. <laughs> they are so I rich. Doubled the caramel because I thought, well, that's oh, that's my not, word. I thought that's not enough caramel, so I'm oh. gonna double it. And they were you had to eat those rice crispy bars with a fork. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm it's sure it's not good. Yeah. I got that recipe from a gentleman at work. Okay, one of the machine operators. I mean, usually it's women out in the mm -hmm. areas that I had worked at, but it was a gentleman and he was a big baker. He loved baking. He okay. would bring treats quite often. And, and oh, he brought yes. these, huh? Yes. So there's caramels, sweetened condensed milk, margarine, marshmallows, and Rice Krispies. So you basically... You think there's some sugar in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I remember right... I mean, yeah, you're putting a little bit of Rice crispy mix on the bottom and then this caramel mixture in the middle and then yep. more Rice Krispies yep. on the top. So it's like a caramel sandwich. Yeah. Very good. Oh, yeah. Your <laughs> s'mores bars. So we always have loved your s'mores bars with the golden oh, grams. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The golden grams. So that was on my list here of things that you make that we loved. Those must See, be there's even other... more than what's in your pile. I was going to say... <laughs> I've got like three piles here, so I'll bet it's in yeah. another. Okay, so then here's one that I wanted to talk to you about because um, I feel like this was one that I remembered or that I liked and you would make it because I liked it. But I see there's coconut in there, so it's the um, <laughs> mashed potato candy. Yes. Yeah. Were those dipped in chocolate? Yes. Okay. They're labor intensive too. Mom but used to make those. That was more her thing. And then I took that over later when her hands were so sore. So here's what I'm wondering. When I had Thanksgiving this year, we had way too many mashed potatoes left over. And I didn't make them garlic or anything like that. They were just a plain mashed potato. Can you use leftover mashed potatoes to make this candy? You could, I think. Um, normally you put milk or cream or and mm -hmm. butter mm -hmm. in your mashed potatoes definitely ideal in, okay <laughs> in the candy it's just pure mashed potatoes oh okay okay without any addition okay in it so i think it would just be richer mm. if you used your leftover because mm -hmm. you'd have butter and cream in it and i did add i do usually add some salt i try not to add too much people can add their own but i definitely add some salt and yeah. i use salted butter when i make 
Oh, yeah. Mashed potatoes. So you couldn't really, I was just wondering, we had so many leftover mashed potatoes. Could I have made this candy? I think you could have. I mean, it, it's just going to be richer. Okay. Which, that was the thing to me. <laughs> that and the veggie pizza are the health food right? treats. <laughs> we, we are really healthy in our family. <laughs> because with the potatoes, it's, it's not quite as much sugary. So, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. The mashed potato candy is three-fourths cup warmed, warm mashed potatoes, and four cups of warm. coconut. Okay. It blends better. Four cups of powdered sugar, mm-hmm. and then 12 ounces of chocolate chips and one ounce of unsweetened chocolate. And so the candy part is the warm potatoes and the coconut and the powdered sugar all mixed together and then rolled into balls, and then you chill those. Yep. And, and then them in the chocolate. you melt the chocolate chips. And then this one has something that we don't see often, a half a bar of Parawax. Mm-hmm. That's so that it uh, hardens on the outside. What Would the, you use that today? The chocolate will harden. Would you use that today or would you use something else? Or I don't it's know sure what way, Parawax is. It, it's, it doesn't need to be kept so cold if it has the wax in it. Okay. Where otherwise you don't want the chocolate sitting out. Oh. You know, it gets soft. You try and pick it up and it gets soft. Mm-hmm. Where the wax combined in the chocolate will seal it enough, you could leave those sitting out on the counter. Okay. Because the potato part two is going to get soft. So, I, mean, you know. I just I'm laughing because I'm like, this is mashed potatoes and powdered sugar together. Yes. But I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> right now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it sounds so weird. Yeah. And I don't know where mom got that recipe. It's one from her that I, you know, uh-huh. copied from her. Yeah. I don't know where she got it, but she always made those. Okay. Well, this might have to appear back at some point so that we can decide if we like potatoes. have to and- make them. Well, I'm assuming you can still buy wax. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm like. Where am I going to find a pair of wax? But... Or did people use something different now? I don't know. It came in a box like a pound of butter, same shape, Mm -hmm. and it had oblong planks of wax in there. And that box would Mm -hmm. last for years. (laughs) Because you're using chocolate chips. And that just says chocolate chips, so it's probably semi-sweet because then you're using one ounce of unsweetened chocolate as well. There weren't all the choices of chocolate sure. chips back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll bet that would be kind of good with a, a mint chocolate chip. Well, now you know. we're just getting too crazy because now we're talking about <laughs> mint mashed potatoes, Mom. I can't go there. <laughs> but you wouldn't know it's mashed potatoes. Know, it, but... it tastes just like a Mounds candy bar. Right. Well, I mean, people, they're using black beans or um like See, in, in, in brownies <laughs> right in brownies or applesauce yeah instead people, of oil and anyway well mashed potatoes and powdered sugar i'll stick with that for now okay <laughs> without adding mint to it if we asked you what would you like us to make oh i'd have to think about that for a little okay. bit okay i was just wondering I'm trying to think what Heidi had the her um her almond bars that has like the white creamy almond frosting with slivered slices of almonds. Those are amazing. I was gonna say you do an almond tart. Oh yeah, the almond what? tort or whatever. But Heidi's almond thing. I need her recipe because what we need to do is if you're making something different than what our normal has been. Do a screenshot of the recipe just in case it goes over well and everybody wants it. And mm-hmm. then you don't go home and think, oh, what was I supposed to do? Right. Oh, yeah, so-and-so wanted the recipe. Yeah. I was thinking there was something two years ago when we had it at your house, something Heidi had brought. Well, it she- was different and <clears throat> just really yummy. I know she made the most amazing charcuterie board. <laughs> That was oh. so beautiful. And for Heidi, she's an artist, you know, yes. so that's her love language. That's her craft. Coming with something delicious, but beautiful. Yeah. Whereas me, I'm just like, I'll f- toss a pan she of ours on the counter. And I don't care what it looks like. I just want it to taste good because I, I don't have the creative, beautiful mind like she does where her stuff just looks beautiful. Yeah. I like the so. presentation. That's what I enjoyed about oh. having the meal at oh. my house. I loved using the china 
and making napkin rings and you did. using actual cloth napkins and mm-hmm. putting the creative rings on them and setting a pretty table with the water goblets and yep. centerpiece. That was the enjoyable part. I didn't mind that at all. I did not get that gene. Um. <laughs> and see, I love I didn't ironing do... the linen tablecloth and putting that on so oh, it's pretty. And... I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm so terrible. And Callie does a good job. I remember one year out at the farm, her tablescape and everything that she took the time to do all these little things. They were beautiful. They were picture worthy. I mean, I was taking pictures because everything and all three of you do that. And then when you come to my house, you're lucky if you don't get a plastic plate <laughs> and silverware. <laughs> so oh. it makes me whatever. But I, we're each to our own, right? <laughs> yep. Our own little specialties. Yeah. But it's, I mean, others look at the way I did the tables and china and stuff as, oh, I know you girls always said, just use paper plates. Mm-hmm. No, I enjoyed doing that extra labor and things that a labor of love because we had so little of that ever i mean we always had decent dishes we didn't use paper plates for every day but we didn't go to any extremes to make it Mm -hmm. beautiful or anything so i mean once a year was just not too much to go a little more elaborate and have something beautiful well, I don't have any other recipes. I can't think of anything else, but... It'd be nice to get some feedback on the mashed potato candy. Yeah, what so... What people think, because that is a very, very old, yeah. old recipe. Or if somebody's already done it, if they're like, oh, yeah, we've made that for years in yeah, my family. Yeah, if that's or, someone I else's hear family it. heritage. We'd love to hear yeah. it because, you know... Exactly. It's something different for our family, so... Yep. Well, Mom, do you have advice for somebody who, you know, now we have our, my kids are, Connie just turned 24 and Sajin's 22 for a little bit here. Just that age where we we have kids who would be starting out as baking or whatever. How, how what hoping, advice would you give? I'm hoping that some traditions don't just fall by the wayside. So who's going to hand, you know, where are some who's of these going to get passed some down? some of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a worry, but it's it's sad. And I'm sure it happens in every family, even my generation. When I look back on what my grandparents mm-hmm. had, mm-hmm. I mean, we used to have oyster stew at my grandpa's. Who, oh gosh, thank goodness we don't do that. <laughs> who mom yeah. was only nine when her mother died, so grandpa yeah. carried that on. Yeah. I remember as a kid going to his house mm. and having oyster uh, I shouldn't say having oyster stew. It was being cooked. You were scoffing at oyster yes. stew, as do yes. I. Yep. <laughs> I just sat there and ate just milk and dry crackers mm. if I had to, to not eat the oyster stew. But Sure. I mean, every generation has lost something, and when is it going to just die out? Right, right. But, and then when I look at it, too, I make recipes that you didn't and Grandma didn't, and Heidi and Callie do too. And Garrett, I know that Garrett makes dotty bars. That was a big thing always in Heidi's family. Heidi would make. And I think Garrett, he has actually taken that over now. He thinks he makes those better than Heidi. So he makes the dotty bars. And I know Katera makes things. So I think there'll be new things. But some of this that we talked about today that I remember may not get passed on in my some family. Some of it, I mean... I didn't take over doing some of this until I was married. Mm -hmm. Well, Kalani and Katera are not married. Right. You know, once they settle into a married life and start Mm -hmm. having families and things, then some of these things mean more Mm -hmm. at that time. And after I had my own family, it's like, oh, yeah, that was so much fun. I'd like to do that, too. Do you have advice for how to, you, you, you too like your stuff really fresh. And so you yeah. wouldn't do much ahead either. How'd you get everything no, done? I don't do much ahead. The only thing that I like to do ahead is know what I'm going to be making. And so that I can start grocery shopping and have everything. Mm-hmm. And I will take a tote and put the ingredients for each 
thing in the tote. Because there again, in the stenographer notebook, I had that list of each thing. Oh. And I would put like Rice Krispie peanut butter bars. I'd write that on a line. And then I would put uh, half cup peanut butter, uh, one 13 ounce box of Rice Krispies. I'd put the ingredients on that same line. And then at the end of the page, when I'd think, okay, this is what I'm going to make. Okay, add up. How much peanut butter did I need total oh, for everything? So mm-hmm. I go, okay, this one needed a half. This one needed a cup. So, you know, at the bottom of the page, I need X amount of peanut butter to make all these things. I need X amount of chocolate chips to make all these things. And then I would know what I needed from the grocery store. So that needs to be started a couple weeks ahead. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> on a budget, I like to know it at Thanksgiving and gradually if something was on sale, okay, Mm -hmm. I know I need this for Christmas baking, you know, kind of thing. And we always think we want to do more than what we need and nobody knows what was on your list. That's the biggest thing is all these years when I'm thinking to myself, oh, there were three things I still didn't get baked. Nobody knows that. I didn't show them my list of what I'm bringing and then not show up with it. (laughs) Yeah. You just want to make the, the first things you make are the ones that everyone yeah. would miss if you grandma's didn't bring. white cookies <laughs> <laughs> yes stacy <clears throat> yep i would just say i forgot and forgot i forgot cases. <laughs> i forgot them in the oven it worked for you <laughs> no no and you Good. need to be kind to yourself because nobody cares like i said nobody knows exactly. and nobody it's not cares like there's not going to be food there's something wrong when what did you say when the when the goodie table takes up more space than what the <laughs> turkey stuffing the, potatoes mm-hmm. veggie everything the I meal mean, I like what Heidi's done um, she still makes a lot of treats and things and then she has her own Christmas with her boys and stuff so she's doing all this baking but I like what she's done now she's not bringing a whole bunch of containers to our Christmas. Like what you said, you're doing a platter of a lot of things Mm -hmm. and bringing that. Uh, Well, Mom, thank you for just talking about Christmas and bringing back these good memories. And just know that we've always enjoyed it and appreciated it. We appreciate it now more as we're older and know how much work it takes to do all of that. But just, you know, we're going to carry on some of them. Each family carries on different well, and recipes, make new, so. and you also are combining with your spouse's yep. traditions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had it so in our family where your dad's parents were gone so early. Right. And my parents were still around, and we lived in the same city all, mm-hmm. all everybody's lives. So we had it so handy. So everything was the same all the time. We had that tradition that was easy to keep going Mm -hmm. because it was just us. Well, Mom, thank you. I really enjoyed this. You're very welcome. It's enjoyable. And it brings back memories, too. I just don't think that I can try mint mashed potatoes. We talked about a lot of goodies today, and the two that I requested for my mom to make this year are her forgotten kisses with the mini chocolate chips and her peanut butter crispy bars with the melted chocolate on top. Now my three prioritized recipes that I have to make no matter what else I get done are Grandma Janet's white cookies, my frosted cream cheese cookie cutouts, and marshmallow cream crunch brownies. If I have more time to bake, I also wanna make fudge, almond tort, uber duber peanut butter brownies, and my all time favorite marshmallow chocolate cream cheese bars. If you're interested in the caramel corn chips, I did a quick Bake With Me episode that walks you through that short process in season one. It was episode 21 back in May. I think it's like a 14 minute episode. But you can get all the recipes on randomsweets.com. And if you're liking this podcast, please share it with your family this holiday season. Thank you for listening today. I'm your host, Stacey Mergenthal. Merry Christmas, God bless your family, and sweet wishes.